All right, I'm going to attempt to fix my 5625 Milwaukee router. So you saw the video where I was connecting the uh, uh, IVAC switch and you saw it inadvertently got powered on with a router bit installed in it and it clipped the cord. Well, I crudely just quickly um, connected it with these butt connectors and crimp, you know, did a you know decent job wrapped it with electrical tape and uh it just looks like heck i can't i can't stand looking at it so even though the router still doesn't work i don't want to buy a new cord so i'm just going to uh, switch this out and i thought i would show you a video of how to do this because um, this is actually one of the simplest things you could do and i'm going to demonstrate that by having my 12 year old who is loving electronic stuff and circuit boards, he's going to uh, show us how to do uh, this. So the first thing that we want to do is we're actually going to cut back this cord a little bit exposed. So might as well just clip that like that. Something like that, I don't know. Let's see. And I also have some, I have some uh, heat shrink that I hope is big enough. I, it's the biggest stuff I have. I'm going to put it on this end because I want to slide it away from the heat source completely. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay. So that's great. Okay. I think we're ready to go. So now this is some pretty big wire. The cord says 12 gauge. And now how you can tell what that, what size cord you, or wire that you're working with. You're not, you're not thinking about this cord, the cover. You're thinking about the internal wires. And so what you want to do is you want to read the cable here and it says here, 14 AWG, so that's 14 gauge. But the the, um, the lower the number, the bigger the cord or the bigger the wire. So if this went to 12 or 10 or eight, it would be getting thicker. Every time you drop down, it gets thicker. So the higher the number, the A AWG, the higher the gauge of the wire, the smaller it gets. In a black, uh, there's no uh, ground on this thing, so it's just, you know, two, so that's all there is. So, Grayson's my 12-year-old, he's gonna, he really enjoys doing this, and he's, we're gonna be using a product, it's, it's already got solder in it, this is a really cool product, it's already got solder in it, you use a heat gun to, um, get it hot and then it melts the solder and then it seals it makes a waterproof connection or water resistant um, it's amazing actually they call it waterproof but i would say I would say it's probably water resistant uh, wire so the different sizes are here clearly written um, did i just say 12 gauge uh, 14 gauge 16 and 14 gauge and then the yellow is for 12 and 10 gauge so tell me that's not really cool look at that it is really neat this thing um, i'm pretty impressed engage one all right racing go ahead you want to get the um So now when he strips this, he's looking at the um, stripper and the stripper, let me show the uh, camera real fast. The stripper has these markings on it and you see where it says AWG. So you match that with the wire that's um, the code on the, the, um, the cord. So you can go 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now, if you don't know what you have, 
it's best to start with the thickest wire and then work your way down because when you strip this, you don't want to be taking off any of the wire. wire. All right. So um, if you wonder why my son has white hair, he was um, the uh, character from uh, Harry Potter for Halloween this year. And he was the character that was uh, the Slytherin um, character What's his name? Draco Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. So his hair has been dyed to look like Draco Malfoy. Uh, it's uh, it's an amazing when you put the costume on, the robe and everything. It's crazy how close he looks to Draco Malfoy with the hair like this. In any case, I just thought I would tell you that. He doesn't normally have dyed I don't even know what that color is. It's crazy what, it's like, I don't know what it is. But, um, so how much wire are we leaving exposed? Okay, so it's gonna be about 3 16 of an inch. Let's make sure that the wires are even too. So when we, when we do this, we wanna make sure that the wires are even. If they're not even, what's going to happen is we're going to be pulling it back like that. So you'll have to cut this one shorter. Cut the just the um, just cut the wire off so it's flush. God, this thing these uh, strippers are so nice. And now go right down to where the um, white the length of the white one. Yeah, perfect. So that's how they should look, just like that. Uh, because here's the problem if, if your um, if your lengths are different and you go to connect them right when you go to connect them you're going to have different length wires you see that but then when you go to get the other side since those have to be the same length too they're going to be the same so we're going to be uh, having to adjust the length of one of those wires to uh, to offset this so it's better just to have this Be good had this I think I bought this at um, look I want to say Lowe's But I you can get this on Amazon. I'm gonna have a link for all of this stuff too, by the way Just so everybody can check out check out Amazon. It says right there 3 8 inch quarter inch 3 16 um, We don't need to have any heat shrink on this with the way that this is designed is completely sealed and everything is fine. So um, the only reason I want to have that is just to uh, make it uh, aesthetically pleasing. Brayson is going to, at this point, flip on the... Okay, so unlike most wire connection type things, you either have to crimp it or you have to solder it. This, you don't solder it. In the, in the same sense as you normally would, this already has the solder in it. All we're doing is connecting the two. So what you wanna do is, you kinda of wanna get these to overlap, the wires to overlap. And then once they're overlapped, he's gonna take the heat gun, and the heat gun is going to melt the solder liquefy it and then it's going to seal up the connectors so that it holds it nice and tight and it makes it a water resistant or waterproof connection so it's really cool and i'm going to let him show you now that the heat gun's all warmed up all right go ahead Perfect. It's like perfect. I don't know. That one shifted when you moved it. This top one, it shifted. It's not. I don't think that that got a good connection. Mm. It did not. We don't try again. Well, we're gonna have to try that yeah. one. Okay. So this one shifted. The other one looks good. You can see the solder liquefying. Okay. See that because it's it's so tight 
and the, um, the sealed ends hold it so firmly. All right, you want to? All right, we'll put the let's put the heat shrink on it, and it looks like it's going to fit. So they have to do it. Hopefully, the piece is long enough. Where does it end? Yeah. Basically, just have to crease the heat shrink. Yes. So we have. Okay, so it ends like right there. Right there, right there. And this ends right there. It's so perfect. Not like cave in the middle and it left up. Yeah. Them. All right. Put it on low. So we'll put the heat gun on low for the um, heat shrink. Go ahead. So you can use a lighter. You could use like a torch, um, but you don't want to catch it on fire. So a heat gun is the best option for you. Can I put it on high? No, it's perfect. High is sometimes it melts too. It's just too quick. Right there. All right. That's nice. Okay. You can see that thing really came in on that. It's pretty good. Put some electrical tape around this area just to add, beef it up a little bit. And, you know. And it will be fine. Like I said, this stays in the router cabinet. It doesn't ever go out. So I'm not, I'm not concerned at all about the uh, cord. This was just one of those things should not have happened. All right. So thanks for watching. Thought we would show you a video. Kind of neat. All right.